Graph the following trigonometric function. Graph at least two periods of each function. Identify A, B, C, and D in each function, and use these to help your graph. Use your graphing calculator to confirm the accuracy of your graph. Make sure that you label the x-axis. Y equals 2 sine of 2x minus pi over 2. Well, A is 2. It's the number in front of the trig function. That's where that comes from. And then B is the 2 in front of the x. C is pi over 2. And we don't have a D in this one. Sometimes people write 0 there. And from there, we can identify some of the work over here. Our amplitude is 2. Again, that's coming from the A value. Period is determined by taking 2 pi divided by 2. 2 pi divided by the B, which is pi. The vertical displacement, we're not moving up or down. That's coming from the B. Reflection, we don't have any reflections in this graph. But we do have a phase shift. And the phase shift is determined by taking uh, C divided by B. Notice that it's 2x minus pi over 2, which means that we're going to go in the right direction. And to calculate it, I'm going to write it up here. It's going to be, I'll, I'll write this down, phase shift. is C divided by B. So in this case, it's pi over 2 divided by 2, which equals pi over 2 times 1 half, and we get pi times 1, which is pi, and 2 times 2, which is 4. Our domain for sine and cosine is going to be all the numbers. And we'll look at the range here in a moment. Since we have a phase shift on a graph, I'll put this in here. Although, before I get going too far, I better put in um, some increments on a graph. Make sure that we label the x axis, and I almost forgot, but 1, 2, 3, 4. So this means that this one is pi over 2. And the reason that it's helpful to label is knowing where the pi over 4 is. And now I can use my highlighter to get that in. We're going to use that value for our pi over 4. And here, we're going to keep this value there along the x-axis because we didn't have any vertical displacement. And now as we take a look here, we know that the sine of 0 is 0. So we're going to start at 0. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, we end. And then the middle point is at 0. And now we can put in our high point and our low point on the graph. We don't have any reflection, so we're going to go up. Instead of going up to 1, we're going to go up to 2. And then we're going to go down to 2 because of our amplitude. And this is 1 period. And then we can put in the rest of them. Honestly, what I like to do when we check in on the calculator, and I won't check all of them on the calculator, but I'd like to look at this graph on the calculator from the perspective of um, from zero over, just one period or so when we do this. If we go over to our graph and we go to the y equals, and we type in our function, y equals 2 phi of 2x minus phi divided by 2. And then let's, on our window, we'll go from 0, and I'm going to go to 
five tire over four. And our increment's going to be pi over four for our scale. Oops. Our misfit factor on the scale times pi divided by four. And then our y min is going to be negative five on our graph. And then we have positive five. And as we compare here, I'll slide this in for a minute to compare, is that the same graph? And even though our graph on the calculator is a little bit more spread out, yes, it is the same graph. So we checked it on our calculator. And the last thing that we need to put in on this problem is we're going to put in the range. And what we see is that our lowest value, our minimum value, is negative 2, and our highest value is positive 2. As we go back over here, it says to graph two periods of the graph. Once we've got the pattern, we can keep graphing. And we can keep graphing the other direction as well. picture of our graph. The blue was the original with a little bit extra because I moved it back to the zero, but then the red are additional periods on the graph. Easy enough once you get one to go from the left side of the graph to the right side of the graph. Problem number two. We've got y equals negative three cosine of one fourth x plus one. Scoot that down just a little bit y equals negative 3 cosine of 1 fourth x plus 1. And let's um, look at what we've got here. And for a, what I'm going to write down is I'm going to write down 3. The negative in front of the 3 is a reflection over the x-axis. And if you look back at your notes, what you see in our notes is we talk about how it's the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. Our b value is 1 fourth. We don't have a c value. We don't have anything added or subtracted to that 1 fourth x. And then we do have plus 1, which is our d value. And once we identify those facts, then we can use them over here in our picture. Our amplitude is 3. Our period is calculated. Our period is calculated by 2 pi by 1 fourth, which is 2 pi times 4 over 1, which is 8 pi. Vertical displacement, we're going to go up 1. We do not have a phase shift on this particular graph. Our domain for sine and cosine remains the same. And we'll look at what our range is momentarily. But what I want to put in here first is our vertical displacement. Shift. And what we said is that it's up 1. So we're going to start here. And we don't have any phase shift, so I'm going to leave that. Our y-axis is the same. And we have cosine. Before I get too far along here, let's label the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's 8 pi. Try to write that a little bit better. Which means that this is 4 pi. And now we can graph. And don't forget that we're going to reflect this over the x-axis. But when we start this, Cosine normally starts at 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So when we go to where these yellow lines intersect here, we're going to think of that as the origin of the graph. And instead of going and starting up at 3, because 1 times 3 is 3, it's 
reflect the double graph. So from this, where the yellow lines intersect, we're going to go down three spaces to negative two. And then one, two, three, four, we're going to finish down. So those are our low points of the graph. We need to go three spaces above our yellow line. There's our high point of the graph. And then our mid values. And here, one period of our cosine function. We take a quick look at this on our calculator. Then I'm going to go back here, clear that out, and type this in. Negative 3 cosine of 1 fourth x plus 1. And in terms of our picture, again, I'd like to start at 0. Um, but I'm going to go to 8 pi this time. And then our increment on our graph is 2 pi. And we're going to look at the y's, it's still negative 5 to 5. And in this picture that we got before, it's more spread out on the, the calculator screen, but it's still the same value. And once we've determined that, let's put in our range here. In our range, the lowest value is negative 2. The highest value is 4. And let's put in some more periods here. Once we've got that, then we're just going to continue the pattern. And it's not that point right there. It's here. And here. Here's another period. And we'll have a few more. Because like I said before, once get one period, you can go from edge to edge of the graph, because we're just copying down the pattern. And there's the picture of our function.